Hello and welcome to the Thursday, May 11th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In Diaries today, we have the second part of Russ's exploratory data analysis with Sysm Cyber Attacks Database. In the first part, he talked a little bit about how to use this open source database of attack data and use it a couple of different tools. This second part now particular focuses on some models that you can build around it to sort of forecast the what's going to happen with data. That's of course always interesting if you're looking for anomalies that are deviating from this forecast behavior. So some things like exponential smoothing, Jupyter notebooks in order to actually conduct some of this analysis. Lots of details here. If you're into data analysis, that's of course nice to follow through with. And this uh, system uh, data set certainly sounds like a nice resource to have some realistic data to play with. And remember back in March, Microsoft fixed a uh, vulnerability in Outlook that actually had already been exploited at that point in time. The big problem here was that that hacker could send an email with a custom sound URL. There is a feature in Outlook, no idea why, that allows you to embed sounds in your email. And just by previewing the email, then the system would attempt to download this file from a remote source, which if you're using SMB as your protocol here, could result in leaking NTLM credentials. So this was a problem, was a real problem in Outlook. The root cause here was actually how the Windows API mapped URLs to different zones. And then in March, uh, Microsoft patched CVE 2023-23397. Problem is, they didn't completely patch it. Akamai today published a blog post about how the original patch was still bypassable, and now Microsoft in this week's Patch Tuesday, so the May Patch Tuesday, did release another patch that fixed this same vulnerability, hopefully for good this time. Lots of details in the blog post about how the bypass exactly worked, uh, how to detect possible attacks, and I believe some of uh, the existing attack signatures for the original vulnerabilities still kind of worked here. And earlier this week, uh, several intelligence and law enforcement agencies have released a collaborative document with details regarding the snake malware. This particular malware has been around for about 20 years. It has been constantly being improved and it's attributed to Center 16 of Russia's Federal Security Services, the FSB. The snake malware is not so much about exploits and such, but it's really the infrastructure then being used to exfiltrate data. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network, so it includes uh, multiple nodes around the world. They're saying 50 countries, they detected uh, nodes for the snake infrastructure in, so not necessarily every participating system here is sort of infected. It could also just be something that was configured and set up as a relay. The report has almost 50 pages and lots of details about how to detect the snake malware and how to, for example, decode its communications. It uses HTTP, HTTP2, but also sort of some uh, simple sort of more TCP socket uh, communication in order to exfiltrate data. As part of this, the FBI also released a tool that they call Persis, uh, the entire sort of snake and Medusa analogies here, that disabled the snake network. So basically deactivated the malware on computers compromised with a snake. However, there is nothing done in order to patch any vulnerabilities or such on these systems. So if you are infected with snake while well, the malware itself is no longer active, the system may just get reinfected again. 
We have seen a couple of cases lately where attackers are tricking users into installing uh, fake uh, Chrome or browser updates uh, based on error messages claiming to be a browser error message. Well, it looks like uh, the people behind the Aurora ransomware are now going a step further and are actually emulating the entire Windows update experience. You know, when you usually have uh, that entirely blue screen and a little uh, progress icon and it tells you it's working on updates. Well, uh, this is basically what they're simulating in a browser window. And uh, then they have a little dialogue here that tricks you into installing their fake update. Looks uh, pretty good in the screenshots here. Malwarebytes has more details in their blog post. And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.